I'd like to welcome my colleagues, Ian Fisher of Siemens, excuse me, and Mike Geyer of NVIDIA. Come on up. And we are excited to join all of you today. Uh, I think we have our rhetorical flourish for today, which is the metaverse is, and I'm going to say multifaceted, because we often talk about the metaverse in terms of its consumer use and even its enterprise use. but. One of the big, huge, not secret aspects of the metaverse is the industrial metaverse. And ABI did a bit of research recently. Um, they're predicting that the size of the consumer metaverse by 2030 will be about 50 billion, enterprise 30 billion, industrial metaverse 100 billion. billion. Yeah. So just to put that into context, I think this conversation is uh, is welcome. It's where so, the money's at. It's exactly. Where the money's at. <laughs> there you go. It's where the real so, money is. <laughs> so, gentlemen, I'm thrilled to, to have you here and to jump into this conversation. I understand NVIDIA and Siemens nice. recently launched a partnership. So. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that partnership and also, Ian, talk a little bit about what is the industrial metaverse. Indeed. Thank yeah. you. What is the industrial metaverse? I think what the future of the no, metaverse is. I think it's more a case for us, industri uh, industry is industrial metaverse, as we look forward. Digital twins, I think everybody's talking about digital twins in the industry now, and uh, we think, see, industrial metaverse is an evolution of uh, the uh, digital twin. Digital twin represents the virtual and the physical coming together, and represents normally the future of how we do things in the industry and industrials. Uh, it represents a lot of information, petabytes of information coming in every day from every device that's out there. How do people leverage that uh, digital twin? We see industrial metaverse as a way to immerse and interact with the digital twins. And so it's really bringing together under one experience, one pane of glass, as we say, how you bring together the digital twin, real-time collaboration, simulation, all this data that people want, and AI as well. And people are saying, we've got all these disparate pieces of technology, how are we bringing this together? And people see that as an industrial metaverse. So really, industrial metaverse is the evolution of the digital twin. It's about bringing, extracting the value and connecting people to the digital twin. That's how we see industrial metaverse as a way that's the purpose of industrial metaverse. That's what industrial people want from industrial metaverse, is how to get value and how to interact and work with their digital twins. Cool. Right. Mike, yeah. does that jive with yeah. sort of where NVIDIA is coming from? And what, mm. what's the relationship between Siemens yeah. and NVIDIA? Yeah. How does that yeah. work? Yeah, I, I think what Ian said is, is really spot on. And that's mm -hmm. part of why we've partnered with Siemens uh, is to bring mm -hmm. our high power compute, AI, and uh, our platform capabilities together with what Siemens is doing. Siemens is one of the leaders in the industrial space. And when we say industrial, we think about uh, heavy industry, manufacturing, production, maybe not as much glitz and glam, not so much fashion, <laughs> but really important industries to address yes. because they're really wasteful and they're really impactful to so many things ranging from uh, health and safety of workers to environmental and sustainability impacts. So it's maybe not as sexy of an industry, but there's so much room for improvement. That's why, um, why we're so excited to be working on it. Yeah. Well, the other catchphrase from today is metavergence, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Word of the day. Uh, Already camped on Word of the like day. That. I, I'm oh, sure right? it's been yeah. copyrighted at this point. But um, my question for you guys is one of the areas or projects that you've come together on is to build uh, a digital twin and industrial metaverse for Friar batteries. And oh, so, right. what does metavergence look like for Friar batteries? <laughs> like, yes, how, how's that working? Yeah, yeah metavergence was, yeah, that's, a, that's actually a great word, yeah. actually. Uh, if it's Friar, it's this battery company, so they make uh, gigafactories for batteries, and as everybody knows, for the automotive and consumer world, batteries are in high demand. Uh, and really, they need to build uh, factories very quickly and optimize them right out of the gate. While they're still virtual, uh, they have to build and sell factories to their customers. So they're trying to sell, design, build, teach people how to operate in these factories and how to actually uh, optimize those factories uh, straight about even those fact while those factories are being built. And so the digital twin is very important as a way to actually work with and collaborate with people across all their partners and everybody else about that digital twin in the Friar building this factory 
simulating it, optimizing it, designing it, training people to operate in it, uh, giving people an idea of the, econo uh, the environmental impact, all sorts of things, and at the same time selling it to the buyers, and then working with all their partners. And so working with, uh, you know, we've got the experience in the, in the industry, NVIDIA brings the raw horsepower, the GPUs, the AI, the fantastic visualization, all these sort of things, so we can bring these things to life. And that's what we're giving Fry, this is a way to do all these things at once in a, in a single environment. Yeah. yeah. And Mike, are you seeing this, I mean, we're talking about a battery factory, but there are numerous uh, industries that are interested in this, right? Yeah, there's a, uh, some things going on at the macro level, right? You've mm -hmm. got uh, redistribution of supply chains to de-risk socioeconomic impacts. So you got a bunch of new semiconductor fabs being built all around the world. Uh, automotive industry is rapidly shifting to electric vehicles. Those EVs can't typically be manufactured in the same plants where uh, a gas combustion engine was built. Mm -hmm. And then you've got battery plants that, are, that need to be built to produce all these, uh, these power capabilities. So that's producing a lot of retrofits to existing mm -hmm. facilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's called greenfield are completely new factories. And at NVIDIA, we believe that in the, the near future, everything that moves will have AI and robotic capability. Mm -hmm. And that AI and robotic capability has to be trained in a physically accurate virtual world. That is the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And so while we talk about maybe you know, the avatar in most metaverse applications, that's really the digital twin. The digital twin is like an avatar of a car, car. of a yacht, of a factory, of a complex mechanical system. It's really that physically accurate training ground for AI so that we can augment all mm -hmm. these things that have traditionally been kind of inefficient. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and I mean just thinking about the software solutions Easy. that you all are building for your clients, like again, what are some of the industry segments that are really knocking on the door here? Oh, we find it across every industry. I mean, this is the most amazing thing about industrial metaverse is you can go into any industry uh, whether it's automotive, aerospace, you know, consumer uh, products, you know, electronics, uh, clothing, uh, you know, you can, it's virtually everywhere, and you can go into any part of the life cycle, whether it's design, planning the factory, operations, people see a benefit in the industrial metaverse. You know, they really want to bring this together. And, I, and the important thing here is about how they want to connect people to their digital twins, and you know, how they do this, how they make the data more personable. This is why immersion is important, good graphics are important, the AI is important. There's so much information, you can overwhelm people with this information, and so AI, there to help you make sense of that information is so important on this thing. And so virtually every industry we can go into, we can find and any part of the life cycle, we can actually find an application or a willing audience or a, a sort of target. And in fact, it's almost too much. We have to be selective about what we're doing right yeah. now. Yeah. And that sort of is a great way to pivot into yeah. sort of the, the big bang question <laughs> here, which is the return on investment. I mean, if people are going to make the investment to create that digital uh, twin in the in the industrial metaverse, like how does it help you? You started to mention it, Mike, mm. in terms of you know things like sustainability or mm -hmm. uh, safety or training. Can you can you elaborate a little bit on what yeah. that looks like? Yeah, it's 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 really exciting because we're starting to see some concrete, tangible business mm -hmm. results coming out of these mm -hmm. these initiatives. So yeah. we've we've got customers in the automotive industry that are talking about uh, twenty percent energy efficiency in a given factory for their paint shop by enabling AI to um, improve processes. Uh, we've got companies talking about 30% improvement in the efficiency of their planners who are developing these new factories. A new factory is typically a 60 month project and we've done some projections where even shaving four months yeah. of that delivery can be $380 million in yeah. extra revenue, time to revenue, not to mention all the, the additional soft benefits that those OEMs are seeing. And this is just by building it uh, virtually in the digital world, figure out how everything's gonna work before you start putting concrete mm -hmm. on the ground so that you can solve these problems ahead of time instead of in, in real time or in real, the real world. In the real world. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, that's very important. Yeah, we do see a high rate, rate, uh, return of investment for people who are even building, while they're building, designing, building, they're already optimizing in the virtual world. You know, accurate simulation, using data from what's actually happening on the ground, bringing these two things together, true digital twin of the, of the construction and then actually operation and then actually what the product does in the field. 
people are constantly optimizing it and the return of investment, even if you're shaving a few percent off here and there, you're saving a lot, you know, <laughs> it's high percentage numbers. Yeah. Okay, so there's yeah. a, a compelling reason to want to do this, yes. but uh, if you're a company out there and you're on the fence, um, what should they be doing right now to try to get ready um, for what seems, another word we heard this morning, inevitable, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think for the, the folks in this room, if you're, you're in the venture space, look at companies that are helping enable industrial metaverse, companies that are helping enable digitization, because that's the big initiative that these companies have to drive. It's amazing the fact that we're 2023, all the technology we have. So many um, companies that produce physical goods, they're still very antiquated in their processes. <laughs> and it's just the, the fact of the matter, it's hard to make physical goods. And so anything we can all do to help digitize those industries to get more done um, in the computer, more virtually, more in, in virtual spaces is going to help them make the jump. And so I'd say that's kind of the opportunity space that everybody here can look at and also the place where we can help the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd agree. I'd say you know, digitalization is a, is a key part of if you want to take advantage of the industrial metaverse or the metaverse in general, you have to have a good foundation, a good IT foundation, digital data. Uh, your process, you know, your business has to be, or enterprise has to be, pretty comfortable with the digital way of doing things. Uh, the other thing is, I would say, don't try and do it all at once. <laughs> uh, start somewhere where you think you really need to improve, or your your sort of like either lower your costs or improve your performance in a certain area. Pick in that area, build on your IT infrastructure to actually start developing on that area and build out from there. Because once you develop that infrastructure and start having success in there, it's then very easy to sort of spread out. If you're trying to do it all at once, I think really you're just taking on too much. There's a lot, as people here are saying, there's a long way to go in this. This is a long road, this is a marathon. Uh, but there is, there are benefits and there is return of investment to be had out there in this field. And if you develop it in the right way, with the right infrastructure, making it, getting the right partners uh, up front. And I think that's the other thing here, partner with the right people. You're gonna need partners. Uh, no yeah. one can do this on their own at the moment. So we've actually raced through our topics and we've pretty much hit it all. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a little audible here. And you know, we talked at the front about ABI and its estimates of $100 billion. What are some of the impediments to realizing that type of growth? Are, are, we, are we doing what we need to do to sort of address uh, some of those impediments and move on? That's a great, that's a great question. Good, good, I think it question. comes, yeah. I, would, I would tie it back to digitization and uh, the ability to take processes that are generally disconnected or mm -hmm. uh, data formats in some of these larger companies that are generally disconnected. Uh, and that's why you know, working with Siemens and, and, and NVIDIA with our Omniverse mm -hmm. platform, we're really taking an open approach using platforms like USD open source, where you've got a, a file format that's, that's open, that's interchangeable, so that these different expertise systems that are used to model complex things like factories can talk to one another, can share data, and can really bring the intelligence all the way from the shop floor out to the executive and the leadership team that's making decisions. So I think it really comes down to digitization, but also collaboration, one of the, the topics of the last panel, just helping people work together in the space that they're trying to develop. Yeah, I think I think that's I, I agree with Mike. Uh, on this imagine discussion. that. Yeah, imagine, imagine that. Good. Good <laughs> no fighting. There you uh, go. No, but I, I, I do think to, to realize this, um, you know, manage the expectations, right? You know, you you're going to be starting this. You've got to be practical. It's, it's hard work to get this to move, and it involves people. This is about people and about putting people into these environments and what are they getting out of it? Are they seeing value coming out of it? Are you making their lives better? Are you helping them to feel more fulfilled and more accomplished in their roles and achieving the high performance that they want? Uh, generally, people want to do a good job, and so are you making sure that you're making their life more difficult or are you making it easier to do a good job? And I think that's the key here is actually focusing on that. That's where that return of investment is. Is it, Just to add it to what Mike was saying, is just making sure that people are always involved in every single step of the way. If they are bought into the, into the industrial metaverse or the metaverse, it'll, be, it'll persist. That's a great way to sort of wrap up the conversation because mm. in the last panel, you know, there, was, mm. there was discussion about you know, young people are being 
are becoming native uh, learners and native um, uh, entrepreneurs and, and experiencing immersive experiences through things like Roblox, et, et cetera, but they're the next generation of people to work in the industrial metaverse. Right, so our future is pretty bright if there's like that embrace Great. early mm -hmm. on, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so much to be excited about. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I think especially if people get engaged with whatever they're doing, you know, whether it's, you know, and also with other people, people don't work in isolation. So I think the important part is they've got to feel that presence in these environments as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny, years ago, I traveled mm. to Qingdao, China, and I went to the beer factory. And in the beer factory, there is a Siemens engine that they routinely <laughs> point out. They say that this was, you know, the creation of their industry was based on a Siemens <laughs> engine from the early days. And I guess I hope that in years to come, yeah. people will look back at the Friar Industrial Twin or whatever it might be, that that was the genesis, the creation of great new uh, advancements and opportunity in businesses. So. Yeah. yeah. And bringing us more beer. <laughs> yeah, it's a, beer, go. a good one. I like so one. <laughs> I think that brings us to the end of our. Up, oh, we do have a question uh, from Sandy Shamuka. Oh, and we just got cut off. We got cut off. So. All right. I guess we're done. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, gentlemen.